Now, one of the most time consuming chores of any homeowner is cutting the grass. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the Ecovacs GOAT. And this is the GOAT A3000 and how this robot can simplify cutting grass, more than simplify it, how it can automate it and you'll never have to cut grass again. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now, as you can see, our Ecovax goat is a little weathered. This guy's been outside cutting grass uh, for a little bit over a month now. And we've been really excited about how simple this robot is to use and how quickly it can make a difference when it comes to cutting grass. Right off the gate, I just wanna highlight with you that this is the easiest robot that we've had to date that cuts grass. There are no wires, there's no antenna, there is no additional technology outside of plugging in the docking station, putting the robot to charge, and making it go. It is the simplest of all the robots that I have checked by far. And it also does a fantastic job when it cuts grass. Uh, the robot does have some sensors. It has a primary sensor up here that uses very similar to the technology that's being used in your home when you think about the Ecovac robots that are in your house that are vacuuming and mopping your floors. This sensor is one of the primary sensors that's taking into account everything that's going around uh, the robot. It does have some cameras and some sensors up in the front, which means that you can watch what the robot is sees and even navigate the robot manually if you'd like to. Um, it does have these rugged tires in the back that are kind of spiky. You'll see that in a couple seconds. And then in the front, it has some very simple tires. I'm kind of like curious as to the design uh, process and why they chose to do that. But from a spec perspective, let me just give you some really compelling specs on why you'd want to consider a product like this. First of all, check this out. This will cover 3,000, or actually, so this will cover 32,000 square feet. That's three quarters of an acre on a charge. That to me is absolutely amazing that it's going to be able to do this. And it has that 360 degree LiDAR detector on the very top that has AI technology as well. This is going to be able to avoid objects. It's going to see your dogs. There's just a lot of intelligence here. You don't have to worry about anyone getting hurt with this robot. Uh, the other thing that it has is fast charging. We're talking 45 minute fast charging. And that's something that's completely unheard of. Now, we talked about how much it can cover. Let me just give you another stats that I think is pretty impressive. This can mow in two hours, 5,382 square feet. Remember, we're talking about the entire coverage that I gave you earlier of three quarters of an acre uh, square foot, but we're talking about what's the efficiency and how much can it cover. And the blades itself, you can have different blade settings or height settings when it comes to the grass, but this has two uh, cutting blades that are 12.99, right? And are gonna be able to cover or uh, cover up to 4,305 square feet per hour. Now let's talk about the overall LiDAR technology that this robot has. This has an advanced dual LiDAR system that is 360, right? So it's encompassing everything that's going on around you. And it also has AI built in. This is not only gonna be able to identify curbs, grass, edges, but it also identifies objects, pets. So it's going to be something that's going to be really safe to use, especially if you have little ones. And you know, we have four Pomeranians, right? So that's something that's really important to us. Now, the other thing is that it has fast charging, the fast charging, 45 minutes fast charging. And it's super efficient when it comes to cutting grass. It's very fast. It is able to mow, right, in two hours, 5,382 square feet. I think that that's pretty impressive. It has two blades that you're going to see in a couple seconds, and it also has the blades are replaceable. So you're going to be able to uh, replace those blades as they get dull over time with usage. It features something called True Edge technology, which enables it to get as close as two inches without any kind of manual trimming. So depending on the edge that you have going on, you may or may not have to take you know those weed whackers that you would use for the corners but it's all gonna be depending on, again, the area that you're working in. Now, you're gonna see in the app in a couple of seconds some of the mowing height uh, settings that you can have, but I just wanna show you a couple other things about the mower before we do that. So here you have these two metal pieces. These are the areas that it connects to when it's charging into the docking station. You have at the very top an emergency stop button. You have that LiDAR, again, that covers everything. You have some controls up here at the very top that basically uh, are manual controls that you can access if that's something that you needed to. You'll see here in the front, um, it basically has a camera, right, with more 3D technology. Again, it's aware of everything that's going on. You have this plastic material that goes all the way uh, around it, 
And the fact is, is that it's going to be beat up a little bit. You can see that I already have some scratch marks on it as it's going through. You can see it right here as it's uh, doing some tight cleaning or, or cutting. Uh, pretty much if we lift this up so you can see what's going here on the bottom, you have these wheels and these wheels are non wheels that have any kind of traction to them, right? They're guiding wheels. So you notice what they look like right here. It doesn't have any grip. I can rotate them. They're just kind of like helping the robot as it's moving around uh, and just in its navigation. I'm going to go ahead and bring this a little bit closer so we can see what's going on underneath. And you can see, you know, no joke, we've been cutting a lot of grass. So here you basically have your blades, and your blades have uh, two sides to them, and they're sharp, right? So these aren't dull blades, they're actually sharp. And these are replaceable blades that you can replace depending on, again, your frequency of cutting grass, and then also the type of um, wear that you have. You get some extra ones in the actual uh, packaging, but you could get more if you need to. And you'll notice that this is relatively clean. I have not touched this. I have not washed this. This is what it looks like after it runs. And then you can see the actual wheels themselves have, oh, they have these spiky uh, type uh, bits to it that you have on, or, or tips to it on each side. This is a mulcher, right? So there's no bag. There's nothing else involved in it. And this is everything that it's all about. Like there's really nothing else to see with this robot outside of the fact of seeing it in action. I wanted to give you one other view of the robot at the very top. So here you have the stop button and here you have the control area. Right now the robot doesn't like that I have it in this position so I'm getting a lot of messaging that the robot is suspended, it's not on the ground, so it does know that. But just as this will give you a view of the top area, you're gonna only access this area the initial, the first time. But if, if uh, you wanted, if somebody were to steal this, they cannot use this robot because it does have a code and it will only function with that code enabled or the phone that's been paired to it. Now Ecovacs does recommend having clearance on each side of the robot, but I found that this cubby right here works really well for us. It's able to get out, it's able to get in, and we haven't had any problems uh, despite the fact that I have some, you know, some small bushes on each side. I keep it clear and it comes out really easily. The cool thing about this is that it returns back into this docking station, it charges itself, and once again, on schedule, it can come out and take care of our yard. Now, despite the docking station being um, semi-covered, you could see that we are getting a lot of debris in it, but it's okay. This is a weather-resistant or weatherproof uh, type of device. You'll notice that there's some two reflective pieces there. Those pieces are part of the guidance system. And you notice that on the left and on the right, there's two metal contact points. Those meet with the contact points on the Ecovax GOAT, and that's how it charges. It is... It's not contactless, it's just contacts those two points there, and then that's how it charges. The extra docking station does have a cord that you can see on the side there that I just have plugged into an outlet. Um, there's a little LED on the top, but this is the simplest dock that I've seen. You can put some spikes on each side to hold it down even further. I chose not to, it's enough there, especially because that's a flat terrain. And despite there being rocks here, the robot is able to get out without a problem. Now the mowing process with the GOAT A3000 is pretty straightforward. We've defined this area by our car uh, to be cut and it goes pretty fast. Now I have defined a higher lawn height because you know I just like to have my grass a little bit higher but you'll see it's just going through and working this small patch. Now when it's working with small areas you'll notice that it does a lot of pivoting. So what you'll see is the intention is if this was a larger area, it would go left to right, left to right. But this is kind of like a tight patch because I have this where the robot's covering right now is what's been defined and that's my property. Uh, the other side is my neighbor's property. So I'm not going over that property line, but you can see how the robot's just taking care of everything. Typically what I've seen is that there could be some randomness uh, taking place in the patterns. Uh, while you notice that the side right there is being left uh, untouched. Once the robot goes over and handles kind of like the, the middle area, I see that it comes back and it takes care of that side as well. As you can see also, the blades are doing a really nice job when it comes to cutting. Uh, so you're getting an even cut and what you're also is not seeing is a lot of loose, I would say, strands of, of grass being left behind. This works, you know, very similar to the lawn, not the lawnmowers, but the actual vacuums that you may have in your home from Ecovac. I just noticed very similar patterns, which I'm okay with, right? So you can see also, it's not even getting close to my car to do kind of any kind of damage, even though, again, what you have is that plastic material surrounding the robot. So it is just gonna continue to do this and make its way all the way up to our mailbox as it continues to cut. 
one of the paths I've defined in my plan for cutting grass has to go over our sidewalk to then make it all the way over to this patch of grass. And it's pretty common that all of us have one main part of grass and then you have a secondary uh, area of grass like I have right here. So this is more close uh, facing the street and it's again going to be an area that I need cut as well. So the robot basically made it from the opposite side of my driveway which was where my car was and now it's making it to this area right here. And there's a couple obstacles that it's going to have to deal with because you see I have some trees there, right? So I have some trees there. I also have a stop sign um, further down and it's going to have to navigate its way around those trees as it's cutting the grass. Another thing that's going to put a, be a challenge somewhat is that as you start getting a curbside, there's a slight inclination. And let me get on that other side because we'll let the robot continue to do what it's doing right here. You can see it running. But if we go over here, based on the street side, you'll notice that this area right here has this kind of inclination, which is going to be a challenge as well. But the robot has been doing really, really well here. So it's been cutting this regularly and we're going to see how well it does. Now, while the robot is running, uh, you can see the area that the robot is working on and you can see the pattern that it's taking. So you'll notice right here that the robot is on a diagonal pattern. And that's a little bit different than what it had been doing before because I have it set up so that it will take a different approach every single time uh, or a pattern. This is important, especially if you want to make sure that you maintain the health of your grass. Frankly, cutting grass is a traumatic experience for the grass, obviously. So as you cut it in different angles, it just keeps the grass more healthy and it restores better. So you'll see what's going on here. You can see the actual robot um, working on the, what I call the street side. This is the zone that I've defined, which is the street. But you can see what I have right here. I have a car side, I have a street side, and then I have the main front area. Each one of these are different zones. And then you'll notice that in between each one of those zones, there's kind of like those gray dots, a white da dashes with that gray path. That's just showing the path of connecting each one of the, uh, the cleaning areas, uh, the actual mowing areas that the robot has to traverse. So you can see my entire map here. So I have one that's where the charger is. You see one that's on the pool side, and then it has to traverse my walkway to come out to get to where the car is and then it has to do the street and then it will do the front. So right now I have it programmed for this video to do two areas, not three, but it could do all three areas. And you can see how it's going through and it is it's doing a really nice job on the grass. It still has to come over and clean the edges, but you can see how well it's doing. And you know, right now I'm kind of monitoring it because I'm doing the review, but you could just let this go and do its thing. And you could see how well this robot is doing, just, just doing its thing cutting grass. The application is really robust. It does have a lot of features and a lot of capabilities that you'll want to dive into and configure to get the best mowing experience. I'll tell you, I ran this robot without touching anything for a very long time. And then once I started getting used to the actual pattern and the usage, I started making some adjustments. So for example, if I look at my mowing settings, you can adjust uh, mowing, right? So you could either set it to auto or what you could do is uh, set the mowing mode to area. And what, let's see if what, what we can go to and touch without messing anything up. So if I go into this area, you can notice that I can have either a delicate or a quick speed. I have quick speed and you can see how fast it's moving. This is not accelerated in any way, right? It's just doing its own thing. So you can see the speed there. Then you can see my low mowing height. I like a taller blade. So I have mine set 3.5 inches. You have obstacle avoidance, right? Flat ground with short grass, you know, so you can choose that. Normal environment or high grass environment. So you can uh, make those settings as well. You notice here is change mowing direction by week. And that's what you see right here. Sometimes it goes left to right. Other times it goes across right, you know, right to left like this. Or in this case, it's doing the angle because that's what the application has been set to do. I also have the choice to either do edge mowing, which is going to go to the defined edge. But what I find sometimes with doing the edge mowing, is that my defining of the edge wasn't as accurate. So what I like doing is cross boundary mowing, which means that it's gonna come over a little bit as it's doing it, and that gets the grass, in my experience, the best. The other thing you have there is uh, rain sensor, right? So the rain sensor, if it does get wet, the robot will go back to the docking station and stop. You have animal protection, you know, and if, um, it rains, it starts working three hours after the rain stops. Now, this is an important point because if you have the robot automated, which is what you'd want to do, once it starts raining, it's going to stop 
And if it is, it's caught, let's say halfway during the uh, cutting the grass job, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go back three hours later, which it expects it's gonna be a little bit drier and cut the grass uh, for you. So that's uh, pretty cool. And then you have the animal protection. Now under robot settings, you also have some settings there. You have safety settings that you can configure. You have an anti-theft system. Once activated, the robot will automatically alarm when it's lifted, right? And you can see that. Uh, you can add the pin. You can change the pin if you forgot the pin. You also have connection options, which is going to give you your MAC address and information about the robot. You can check that out. Uh, you have maintenance, right? How many hours um, the blades uh, pretty much have. Uh, the amount of hours worked, the amount of hours remaining will be there. And you could actually choose the... Uh, the actual, you know, order your replacement if that's something you'd like to do. And then you can go into your um, about your robot, which is going to be, again, giving you more information uh, about your robot when it comes to the MAC address, all, all things uh, serial and, and whatnot. And then you have your AI recognition, which is going to give you, it's going to recognize, again, dogs, cats, you know, pipes, things that are on the ground. You have time zone settings and then language settings, as well as if there's a firmware upgrade, you could go ahead and do that as well. Now, when you're working with your robot, you do have a couple of modes that you can work with. You can have auto, area, edge, manual, or enhanced. Uh, literally, what you can do with this robot is you can run this robot like if it was a remote control RC car and just re control it with your phone. And you can actually cut grass that way too if you wanted to. I haven't had to because the robot does such a fine job. Now, at times, what I'll find is that if it misses an area by any chance, what I'll do is I'll have it go over that area a second time. So, uh, you know, that's just one thing that, that I've done. Now, I've had this robot, and I would say that while this is a review, it's kind of like there are they are putting out firmware um, upgrades. Um, I've had it before it became publicly available. So my experience is a little bit different than the one that you'll have. And who knows, maybe even the robot physically has had some internal changes than the one that I have. So far, I can tell you, this is a great robot. It's a robot that I would definitely consider purchasing. And given that it can cover three quarters of an acre and it requires literally no, little to no configuration, you configure it by walking it or you can have it do it automatically. And the automatic, like it did this mapping right here. This was an automatic map. And you can see how well it's doing and how nicely it's manicuring our lawn. I actually really like this. And Again, it's, it's, uh, I'm standing out here watching it just for this video, but you don't have to. This is how much time you'd save. So that wraps up our review. Go out and get one. You'll absolutely love it.